Andrew, what is peak oil and, and what does it mean? Yeah, peak oil is essentially the point at which the world stops being able to increase its usage or its rate of usage of oil and gas. You know, peak oil in my mind is essentially an inventory measure where you're going to put in the numerator the total amount of barrels that the world has and the denominator the rate that, that the, the globe uses oil and gas supplies. And, uh, you know, the, the actual initial work that was kind of is credited mostly is, was done by E. King Hubbard at Shell Oil back in, the, I believe, the 1960s. And at, at the time, he correctly predicted the peak in U.S. oil production. And using his data, a lot of folks thought that the peak in U.S. oil production, probably global oil production, was going to happen in the 2004 to 2009 time period. Of course, it's going to take a number of, of years beyond that period for us to really assess if it truly happened. But fundamentally, you know, we, we have two ways to control peak oil. One is to add new resources, which we've done through shale gas, through shale oil, through uh, you know, potential you know, new deposits in the Gulf of Mexico. And then uh, on the, 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 the denominator side, excuse me, or what we can change is how quickly we use it. And, and that comes where, or that's where conservation, carpooling, and other such kind of measures can help us out. So you know, how those two balance out will ultimately determine when peak oil occurs. And I, I think we're right now we're, we're right in the middle of that assessment. So given that it's been on the minds of people for the last 40 years, is it something that's imminent or looming? Is it something that we really need to plan for? Are governments around the world? Absolutely. I mean, it's no one wants to wake up and find that. You know, <laughs> we all, have no yeah, more. <laughs> exactly. So that, in my mind, that's where we're going to see additional alternative resources come to the forefront. Of course, over the last you know couple of generations, it's been nuclear. We've had hydro for a while. You know, we had we've, we've got a lot of coal. You know, the, the question is, how can we scale up those additional resources, particularly solar, you know, hydro, kind of nuclear, to kind of do it safely and sustainably? So, given the fact that a lot of people think this should be a risk management scenario. Um, what are we doing, or, or what's the estimated economic impact? Is that can you even quantify that? Oh, uh, there are, there are probably a, a lot more savvy economists out there that have an, an estimate on on the impact of of switching to alternative fuels, and that's uh, sadly that's outside my my bailiwick. <laughs> there seems to be a, a dearth of of case studies or programs dedicated to what happens if when this actually occurs. Should there be more business school studies, expansion of what, what, what we're doing? Or is that going to solar, going to grid? Are those the alternative ideas? Wow. Um, certainly, there, we'll have to have a number of different possibilities. You know, a, a, few years, a few years ago, ethanol was a very big idea. And of course, Brazil, as I understand it, has a lot, lot of ethanol supplies to the U.S. You know, given that the first presidential primary happens in Iowa, you know, we'll, we're, you know, we'll probably have corn-based ethanol for a while. Uh, however, it's, you know, it's going to take probably a generation or, or more for us to determine whether you know, all these different ideas can actually be sustainable and, and scaled up to, to the size that we'll need to have, it, you know, have, have a meaningful impact on the overall use of energy. So given the depletion globally, should the U.S. be more focused on our oil reserves? or what we can do as alternative energy? Well, sort of bringing it in house. Yeah, certainly. Uh, you know, and I think shale gas has, has, has helped kind of open people's eyes that that possibility is there. Uh, the U.S. for the most part is self-sustaining or North America is self-sustaining on a natural gas side. You know, we, we import some LNG from, from outside North America, but it's, it's m maybe 10 percent of usage on a daily basis, whereas on the oil side we're importing, you know, I think 60 percent or, or, or more of our oil usage. So. You know, shale gas is probably our best opportunity in the short term to kind of alleviate those needs and, of course, then finding some ways to get natural gas into the transportation infrastructure. I mean, at this time, oil is primarily a transportation fuel and gas and coal are primarily power fuels. And we have to find a way to kind of create that BTU parity. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you.